Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Jess. I'm a third grade teacher in Southern California, and tonight is actually our back to school night, which is the night before school starts for us, where parents come in and can get information about the class, we do a little presentation, and we get to meet the kids. So I am so excited. I cannot believe that it's already here. I get to meet my students in like 10 minutes, so I'm so excited. I'm feeling a little nervous. Got the butterflies going, but um, I'm really, really excited. I just, I love school, and <laughs> I just can't wait to meet my kids. I can't believe oh, okay Anyways enough rambling I wanted to show you guys a little bit of my setup and kind of what I do for back-to-school night and Yeah, here we go Okay, so I always have this sitting out on a back table. This is in the back of my classroom so I'm just gonna stand at the door when parents walk in and um, Send them over this way. So um, I will show you in, the, in a minute. What is in these folders? Sorry for my stumbling. I'm a little nervous right now. Um, I always put this out to it just says welcome to third grade and then there's like a cheesy little pun and some mints but something that will hopefully make them smile and feel welcome. I put out this sign. This little sign holder is from Walmart. It says please sign in here and take your one folder per student. You may sit wherever you'd like since we don't have name tags for any students. They can just pick wherever they want to sit for right now. And then in all of these folders, I'm just gonna open up a random one. Um, I just have a bunch of little things that I want them to um, look at or know or fill out. So this first one is a get to know your child in a million words or less. So it has all different kinds of things about strengths, weaknesses, what motivates them, homework routine, five words that describe their child, school age siblings and their grade, what kind of things upset your child, um, what goals that they have for their child, any personal medical issues I should be aware of, a few of my child's favorite things, any holidays their family doesn't celebrate, and then comments or concerns they'd like to share. So this is one of my absolute favorite things to get back at the beginning of the year because it gives me a little insight into my students before I really get to know them myself. So that's kind of cool to learn about them through their parents' eyes. And then this is something that I shared with you guys in my classroom management video. So because of time, I'm not gonna go through this all, but um, this is something that is kind of like a contract that parents will go through with their kid. I will go through with their kid and then I'm going to talk about it in my slideshow as well. This is also a freebie on TPT. This is a printout of all of the grade 3 standards. On the front is reading and writing. On the back is math. Um, just so they have kind of an overview of what is expected for them to learn. I have a page here about what is flexible seating. Um, I talk about this in my back to school slideshow. It's like one of the first things I talk about, but um, just in case any parents weren't here or they wanna learn a little bit more about it, um, this is what I have. And this is also included in my um, flexible seating pack that I have on TPT, which includes the bulletin board. Um, there's a bunch of stuff in it, but this is in there. Whoa. Um, I also have a page for book chats. Book chats are something that I do with my students in lieu of like a reading log or um, like a book report. So every book that my student reads, I have a little quick chat with them for comprehension to help them become more confident in a reader, to get to know them as a reader. And um, I want my parents to be aware of what that is. Um, we have a movie per permission slip. That's the last thing on the side um, because sometimes we'll watch PG movies and they need a permission slip for that. On this side, I have this QR code. So we have a link to our Symbaloo page, which is basically a website that has a bunch of different tiles for like videos for math help, for different things on YouTube, for like vocabulary or grammar or spelling, all different kinds of things. Um, and I have a little piece of magnetic tape on the back that parents can have this sticking on their fridge. That way the kids can scan the QR code. They can scan the QR code and they don't ever have to like sift through their emails to try to find it. And then this is that booklet that I could not figure out how to do. If you have this one, it's from Learning in Wonderland. Every other page has to be upside down when you copy it. <laughs> um, but it just has, oh, this is really hard to do, one-handed. Meet the teacher, um, a little thing about arrival and dismissal, class parties and birthday celebrations. We have our class supply list with a little checkbox. Whoa, this is so hard to do one-handed, oh my goodness. We have um, PBIS and a little bit about our classroom rules and procedures where I talk to them about Essential 35. And then we have our homework policy. Someone's coming, hold on. Okay, false alarm. Someone was coming up my room. So this is what we, I have in those folders for parents. I'm gonna put this down so I can 
fix this and then I'll show you what else I have. One other thing I have out are these crates for supplies. So there's only a couple different supplies that I want them to sort at back to school night. Those are post-it notes, copy paper, pencils, Kleenex, disinfecting wipes, and Ziploc bags. Because everything else we are going to sort and put in their bins tomorrow and then I will store everything else. So individual things like crayons or colored pencils, scissors, things like that are going to go in their own pouch. And so um, this makes it a lot easier for me so I don't have so much stuff to kind of sort through on the first day. Um, and it just helps it keep it kind of clean and organized. And then I just wrote them a little note to only sort the supplies listed and thanking them for their generosity. Okay, I now only have like five minutes before the families come in. So... I need to take some deep breaths, drink a little bit of water, and um, get ready to go. But after they leave, I will try to show you guys my back to school night slideshow. And if I don't get a chance to do that, I will definitely do it tomorrow after school. But wish me luck. Okay, it is now tomorrow after school. So I wanna show you guys just a quick little run through of what is in my back to school night slideshow that I do with parents on back to school night. Just as kind of like a disclaimer for myself, this is definitely not to show you guys like what should be included. I feel like I say this every video, but um, I just don't want anyone to think that I'm like, this is what you should have. I'm just showing you guys what I do because I know that especially like when I was a brand new teacher, I didn't really know what to do at all. And so I would have really appreciated having some kind of like video examples. And so that's why I try to provide a lot of like information about stuff I do, not because I think I'm the best or like I think this is the way it should be done, if anyone has any suggestions, I'm totally open to it. I just, I want to put out information that's helpful for people who don't have it or who don't really know where to start. So, um, this template, I'm trying to think where I got it. It might have been, I think this might have been the template that my master teacher uses and then I just copied and put in my own information. So, um, if it is, thanks Lisa. And if not, I'm sorry, I don't know where it came from, but this is just on PowerPoint. Then the next slide is a principal's message. So she had sent a video to us in our email that we could only open through Google Slides, I think. I don't know, it was in Gmail. So on this part, it just was a reminder to me that I needed to go open up my web browser and play the video that they had sent, but it was just welcoming families back and that's pretty much it. So in this slide, I just say um, a little bit about myself, where I got my education, my teaching credential, all that good stuff, some things I like to do for fun, um, how many years I've been working for the district, which I took out because of my privacy. <laughs> and then um, I just say teaching is my passion. I'm so excited about the amazing year we're about to have. Um, since when they walk in, they're going to see that we have flexible seating and they're probably curious about how it works and what it is. Um, I like to go over a little bit about what it is. So I will just say students, and I pretty much just read these slides and then I add anything if I'm feeling brave and want to go rogue. But um, I'll say students are able to choose a spot where they are comfortable so they can work best. We don't have assigned seats, so they'll get to pick their spot whenever they come in in the day. I like using this system because it empowers students with personal choice about what's best for them. Um, it improves focus and stamina when students are comfortable, able to move while they learn. It gives students the opportunity to work with every classmate and collaborate throughout the entire day, building classroom community and social skills. It's student-centered. The classroom may change depending on what is working for the kids. They're going to have input, and I will make changes based on what they need and want. Also, it's important for them to know um, that in order for this kind of environment to actually work and be successful that we have to have strict rules so I briefly go over what the rules are and I let them know that these will be expected for their students to follow not only for their safety but in order for them to be learning and so if a student loses their privilege that may happen from time to time but not to worry because then we're going to work together to help them earn it back. I go over behavior, so we talk about our three classroom rules, be respectful, be responsible, and be safe. I tell them that in order to help students follow these rules, um, we have the essential 35 to teach them specific expectations. Um, and then I just, instead of telling them what all the 35 are, I just tell them that there's more information in their back to school folders if they want to know exactly what those are and then how this will be implemented. So um, every student is gonna start the day with four points in their agenda, which our school provides for us, it's like a planner. And then if the student chooses to break a rule, the first time it's just a verbal warning, they don't lose a point. The second time they're gonna get their number on my personal clipboard and I go over all this in my Essential 35 video if you want more information, but um, this is just what I go over with parents. And if they get the number on the clipboard, then they lose five minutes of fun for the day. A third time they get one check next to their number and then we're going to have a discussion at 
the next recess. If there are no recesses left for the day, the consequence will be implemented the first recess the following day, and then they'll have two points in their planner. The fourth time, it's gonna be two checks on the clipboard. The parent's gonna get contacted. It says typo on handout because on the handout I put for them, it says third time twice. Um, but that would mean that they had one point in their planner and then severe disruptions will be sent to the office immediately. And then um, I always tell parents that they need to check their student's planner every day because this is where they're going to be signing for not only homework but student behavior as well. Um, and then I also tell them that it's really important to me to build positive relationships with my students. So although this sounds very negative, um, this is just like worst case scenario, but they will be constantly praised. I send home positive notes randomly or phone calls. Um, we do five minutes of fun every day. They'll get house points. We have a VIP student every day. And then um, we have smelly spots, which is the chapstick thing that you may have heard me talk about. Then I tell them a little bit about the house system, that we're going to be using houses kind of like Harry Potter, and they're going to stay with their houses for one trimester. Last year, I did the whole year, and I just, I wish I had mixed it up a little more because I think they got a little too comfortable with their house, and I want them to get to know other people too. I accidentally hit, I accidentally hit my little <laughs> doorbell on my lanyard. Whoops, that was happening all day. Every time I cross my legs. Anyways. So I say they'll stay with their house for one trimester where they'll learn to work with a team towards a common goal by earning points. Houses will receive points for correctly following our essential 35 to reward positive behavior. Points will never be taken away. And then um, I wish I had changed this because I just left the rewards the same, but that doesn't work if I'm gonna be changing them per trimester because they can't be a trimester house winner because points can't be accumulated multi-trimesters if the teams are different if that makes sense. So I made an oopsie and I was like, um, I'm gonna need to change that, my bad. <laughs> and then I just moved on. Um, in my classroom, we do book chats, so I don't use AR or reading logs. Um, children will have book chats on every single book that they read, um, which is just like a one to two minute little chat where they get to tell me about it. Um, this really helps foster the love of reading in the kids and allows them to get excited and have conversations much like adults do about books. Um, and then there's monthly page requirements, and if they meet that and double it, then we have a special reward. So everyone is expected to meet the requirement. If they surpass that by doubling it, then they get a reward. Um, and then they use sticky notes too to track their thinking, and that's it. Um, then I go over our homework policy, which is not important um, to talk to you guys about, but just kind of what we have to give at our school. Um, and then again, reminding them that as third graders, the responsibility has increased. So um, they're gonna be responsible for writing everything down in their planner and communicating that with their parents. It's not gonna be um, on my shoulders or the parents. And then I like to include something about key areas to focus on at home because a lot of parents will ask me like, you know, what else can we work on? And so I wanna give them something that they could work on straight away. So a lot of parents took a picture of this as I was talking, which is good to know that they care and appreciate that and you know want to work on extra stuff. So uh, multiplication obviously is huge in third grade and we'll be practicing it a ton, but any extra practice that they can get at all would be really helpful. Um, reading is awesome. As much as they can read is great. Um, writing in complete sentences because that is something they really struggle with. And then addition and subtraction. I said most third graders struggle with three digit addition and subtraction and then subtracting across zeros is really hard for them also. Um, I put in something about our school attendance policy and sending in a note. Um, also about our site celebration. So our school is really big. We have almost a thousand kids. So having birthday celebrations every day was just becoming way too much for the staff to keep or the office staff to keep track of and so this year and last year instead of doing every day we had one birthday celebration day a month for that birthday month so July and August are together and then June and May are together and then every other month has its own day the parents can come in like the last 15 to 20 minutes of the day on that celebration day bring treats and then they get to celebrate with their kids still but it's not like an every time there's a birthday thing which I actually really like I know there's mixed opinions about that but having to do like a 20 minute birthday party times 25 or 30 or however many kids you have in your class takes up a ton of instructional time. Um, I put in a little thing about supplies in there. So we have a supply list in that back to school flip book and then um, not to stress about bringing supplies in immediately. They can bring them in anytime this week. 
and that's it have a little thing about PE because we do PE every day so they'll need to be making sure their kid is wearing correct shoes bringing water and letting them letting me know if they have any medical issues I should be aware of um, I tell them a little bit about our curriculum and this is a really good time for me to introduce that little QR code reader for them because that'll really help them with our math curriculum especially because we put the links from Embark. We use Engage New York, so um, if you don't know Embark with a C, I think it's embarkonline.com or maybe .org. I don't know, I'll find it and I'll link it down below for you guys. But they have videos for every single lesson, um, homework help, everything. It's amazing and so it's really cool to be able to give that to the parents and say, hey, if you're struggling with this, because I know Common Core you know, can be tricky, Make sure that you are watching these videos because they're really, really helpful. Um, we're a one-to-one -one district, but our kids used to be able to take home their Chromebooks every day, but we don't do that anymore. Um, last year was the first year doing that, but second graders always left them at school. So they always think when they come to third grade that they can take them home, but that's not the case anymore. So um, I put something in here about them being able to check out a Chromebook if they want to. Um, a little thing about volunteers and the process for what they have to do and what kind of opportunities I have for them to volunteer. A little thing about dismissal because um, K through 2, the teachers stay with the kids in their own class and then 3 through 5 we have different duties. So like half of us will walk the bus lines up to the bus because it's kind of far. Um, some of us have to close the gate or watch different parts of the playground to make sure kids are going to where they're supposed to be going. So we don't watch our own class and um, that's a big change for both the students and the parents so making sure to let them know if that is important. Um, I'm going to skip the next slide because it has my personal information for joining um, Remind 101 but it's just a communication slide that has directions for how to reach me on Remind and how to sign up for that as well as my email address and then um, a little note about if you want to have a meeting with me I'd be happy to do that but make sure that you schedule ahead of time and not to just show up because um, I need to make sure that I'm adequately prepared or have time or I might be doing something or meeting with someone already so um, and then the last one I just put this slide up it says questions um, thank you so much for being here tonight please make sure you put your contact info on the sign-in sheet on the back table Take home one folder and return documents signed inside a folder by this Friday. I'm looking forward to get to know your family better and to the best school year ever. I know I look a little different right now than the part of me that you saw in the beginning of the video and that's because today is tomorrow from when the beginning of the video was, if that makes sense. Um, so it is the last day of school, no, the first day of school. Today's the first day of school. So I just wanted to show you guys that real quick. And yeah, I'm sitting in the dark because I'm exhausted and I'm kind of trying to like plan out a couple things for tomorrow. So I'm going to put this video up probably this weekend and then stay tuned because very soon after that is going to come the first week of school vlog where I show you guys all the exciting things we did and how I made the first week of school awesome for my kids. So thank you so much for watching. If you have back to school night soon, I hope that this helped you. I hope that you have an awesome time at back to school night and that your families are wonderful and that your kids are awesome and that you're excited for a great school year ahead. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.